Taking Woodstock, A True Story of a Riot, a Concert, and a Life, by Elliot Tiber is a captivating memoir that provides a first-hand account of the iconic Woodstock music and art fair in 1969. The book takes readers on a journey through Tiber's life as he navigates the complexities of organizing the festival, while also shedding light on the social and cultural climate of the era. Tiber begins the book by introducing himself and his family, emphasizing his connection to the small town of White Lake, New York. He delves into the struggles his parents faced as immigrants and their eventual purchase of the dilapidated El Monaco Motel, which would play a pivotal role in the Woodstock story. The narrative then shifts to Tiber's experiences as a closeted gay man living in the conservative community of White Lake. He describes his involvement in the LGBTQ plus scene in nearby New York City, highlighting the challenges and discrimination he faced during this time. As the book progresses, Tiber recounts his serendipitous encounter with Michael Lang, one of the organizers of the Woodstock Festival. This meeting becomes the turning point in Tiber's life as he takes on the responsibility of securing a venue for the event after it faced significant setbacks and opposition from local authorities. Tiber's negotiation skills and connections with the local community eventually lead to the selection of Max Yaska's farm as the site for Woodstock. He vividly describes the chaos and excitement that ensued as the festival approached, from coordinating logistics and dealing with legal issues to managing the influx of visitors and ensuring the performers had a stage to showcase their talents. Throughout the memoir, Tiber provides glimpses into the countercultural movement of the 1960s, touching on the anti-establishment sentiments, the civil rights movement, and the anti-war protests that were prevalent during this period. These insights help contextualize the significance of Woodstock as a cultural milestone and a symbol of peace and unity. Tiber also shares personal anecdotes about encounters with notable figures such as Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Grace Slick, offering intimate glimpses into their personalities and performances during the festival. Beyond the festival itself, Tiber reflects on the aftermath and the impact Woodstock had on his life and the community of White Lake. He explores the struggles he faced in the years following the event, including financial hardships and the fading of the spirit of the 1960s counterculture. In Taking Woodstock, Tiber's writing is engaging and rich in detail, transporting readers back in time to experience the energy and spirit of the era. His storytelling abilities, combined with his insider's perspective, provide a unique and personal account of the Woodstock Festival and the social and cultural revolution it represented. Overall, Taking Woodstock, a true story of a riot, a concert, and a life, is a captivating memoir that offers an intimate look at the events leading up to and following the iconic Woodstock Festival. Tiber's storytelling transports readers to a time of profound social change and highlights the enduring legacy of a cultural phenomenon that continues to inspire and resonate with audiences today.